here we are following uh, these heroes down to the bottom mark, Eshagoyne and Barcello. These guys have just been so solid this race and I think it's their handling uh, that's really helped them um, all but secure right now their world championships as they make their way down to the finish line. And Eshagoyne, Barcello, here they go, finishing your world championship, your world champions, Eshagoyne and Barcello. Congratulations to the Spanish girls. Tamara Echigoyen and Paula Barcelo won the 2020 49er FX World Championships in Geelong. And that was after a thrilling match race against the British team in the medal race. Hi, my name's Andy Rice. Um, and I've got Tamara and Paula with me today. But I want to talk to you girls about a different race in that cha championship. But firstly, uh, good morning to you both in different parts of sunny Spain. So, uh, Tamara, how are you and where are you? Hello, Andy. I'm in Santander. I'm fine. Enjoy this lovely weather, <laughs> sunny and windy conditions. So I'm fine. And Paula, you're in an even nicer bit of Spain because you're in Palma de Mallorca. So what's it yeah. like in Palma? Yeah, I'm in Arenal. And yeah, so happy and looking forward to go to Santander. As you know, Arenal is always sunniest than Santander <laughs> with better weather. So yeah, so happy. Uh, I'm well, so happy to be here talking with you today. <laughs> uh, thank you, Paula. And I, I wish I was there with you in, in Parma and almost as much in Santander. But Santander, as we know, she's not entirely wrong, is she, Tamara? It can rain a little bit in Santander. <laughs> Well, it's true, the, the, the autumn and the winter is a little bit harder in Palma de Mallorca, but now we are close to the summer <laughs> and it's perfect here. So yeah, we, we didn't forget the winter in Santander, just to say <laughs> that exist, and now we have to focus on the summer that is perfect in Santander. We have a really good vibe oh, okay. and, and also condition. I think that I'm not sure if you have been here in the world in 2014. I, I wasn't, but I've, I've been to Santander a few times. Oh, yeah? But so, not, not 2014, no. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So it's nice. But I have to say one thing. I'm not from here. I'm from the, the, the north of Northwest, Galicia. That is a little bit better than Santander. <laughs> and also from <laughs> <my Mallorca. laughs> Hey, enough of that. Enough of that. We know that Spain is lovely. You don't have to remind us. Uh, what I want to ask you about is, is a few months down the line from Geelong. Congratulations to you both winning those world championships in Thank Geelong. Uh, Paola, what is, what is your greatest memory of Geelong? Um, I don't think I just have one situation. It was the whole championship. Obviously, the medal race was very exciting and winning the gold medal, it was, well, amazing. Uh, but I think the, the whole championship was um, really impressive and we enjoyed a lot. And um, Tamara, you didn't have such a good world championship in Auckland just two or three months earlier. So tell us how, what happened in Auckland? Where did you finish? And then how did things change so dramatically in those few months? Uh, I, Paula and me had a, a problem when we were training in New Zealand. Uh, Paula has an injury and and she came to Spain to do a surgery. So it's like we had a really, I think that we did a really good job in Santander the, 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 the month before the, the wars to prepare to be ready, not for doing our best wars. It's not, there is something more that is take the spot for the Spain because uh, the country didn't have it. So it's like, uh, I think that we felt that we were prepared for doing a really good uh, work. But sometimes in, in our path, there is some kind of this situation that is like in Europe. So Paula <coughs> came back and did a really good job to, to start in the start line in the first day of the wars. But uh, we didn't have enough, uh, I think that enough confidence for doing a lot of things and we have to <coughs> to be honest with this kind of situation. It's not just the, the injury, not Paula, it's I think that a lot of things and we have to just to be a little bit strong and try to learn about these mistakes because finally if you learn from them, finally you can do the, the, the good things or the best things in two months. So I think that we learn a lot in these words. It's like for us it's 
really important, not just for the result that is not good, because we have to abandon the, the, um, the words. The doctor say to us that is the best decision for them in your so decide to say okay it's not for us this works we have to to in this case to wait out <laughs> of the of the course and try to cheers for our team's mates and try to enjoy it in a different part so i think that for us the best thing is just to sit up and try to to select all the mistakes that we have we had in this competition and trying to learn from them and say, okay, now we are a stronger team because we we support each other. That is for me the best uh, part of this kind of team, not to say with some people that is like uh, this kind of support. So Paula and me decide to, to still uh, working and to still fighting for our goals. Paolo, I'm going to take you into this particular race. Now I've not given either of you any warning about what this race was going to be. Um, but Paola, how much do you remember about the last minute of the start before race 10? This is like um, two races, I think, before the medal race. So do you remember uh, what you were thinking going into this race? Um, yeah, I remember that this day uh, was, well, these two races were pretty determinant because they were the two final races before the medal race. And we were pretty close to, to Charlotte on the overall, so it was going to be really determinant. And well, I have to say that uh, we didn't find uh, good confidence in the start in Geelong, so probably we decided in the last minute to, to go on board and to, to take another strategy. But I think it was great at the end, and, and we managed to to do a to make a good comeback and 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 go go for go forward okay so uh, tell us you've got 10 seconds to go now uh, what are you thinking tamara what do you need to do now <laughs> well i <laughs> i don't remember exactly the race but uh i agree with pablo that in some race uh, we didn't do do a really good start so sometimes it's like feel not confident with this but in this case um I think that it was the last day of competition. Maybe we have to fight for the left. I'm not sure, Paula, but looks like. So uh, uh, I think the Gilon for us is like a um, challenge for Saria because it's changing all the time. And sometimes you are yeah. sure about one side and finally change everything. So you have to change and you have to adapt all the time your tactics. Uh, because it's like it's not easy. Yes, okay, I would like to go to the left, but in the middle of this decision, something changed. So you have to adapt all the time the tactics about this kind of <clears throat> wind changing. So it's like I remember that I thought, Paula, that we are, we would like to go to the left. Uh, yes. But I'm not sure about <laughs> if we finally did it or we have to tack and then come back in, in another phase or something like that. Okay, so you're struggling to remember the race at this stage then, are you, Tamara? <laughs> I told you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> so at the moment, who would you want to be looking at the boats here? Who, who do you see doing particularly well here? Well, yeah, I think that for the part of the start that we try to, to start is like we would like the left, but it's not a good start. So we have to, I think that tack. And I'm not sure yeah. if it's a good number, so maybe just to sail on, or it's not, it's just to come back and, and, and tack again and go to the left. But it's true that uh, Geelong is like an open course that you have a lot of chance to take to, <clears throat> to come from the back to the top of the, of the fleet. So I think that, I think that it's like we want to go to the left, but finally we didn't because we tacked. So, <laughs> so um, well, also, the weed was a big problem for the NACRAs. What was the weed like uh, for the FX fleet? You, you mean, the, the weed in the water? So you, if you catch the weed ah. up on your foils, how much ah. of a factor weed, was that? Ah. Paula? <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I really think that this day there wasn't a lot of weed in the water. I remember that in the Oce Oceania Championship, it was incredible how many weeds and how the weeds affect the maneuvers but in this race I, I i don't remember there were so many weeds on the water i remember it was so tricky and and shifty and there were a lot of uh difference of pressures 
So I think it was pretty important to to keep the head out of the boat and and catch all the information from the course and and try to 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 do a good strategy. Okay, okay. A very, very tricky race course, as you say. Uh, the Finns yeah. not able to carry on. The Finns were forced to tack away by the Americans, but the Americans do a bad tack on their side. And then uh, Germany 5, I guess maybe that's uh, Lutz and Wiemers from Germany that we saw just then. So we're not seeing much of you because you're on the, the far side of the race course at the moment. But uh, hopefully we'll... Yeah, I think that we were there in lingua of the, the split. I think so because it's yeah. like a thing flag there, but <clears throat> yeah, looks like uh, Paula and me had to play a little bit in the middle of the um, <clears throat> and the course area. So yeah, so, I, I now remember that I think that in this race, the the, the both stream of the of the race course was was, well, like, was working. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, <laughs> um, and. How uh, how were you feeling about your performance in the championship so far, Paolo? Um, you obviously knew that you still had a chance of winning at this stage, but were you surprising yourself with how well you were doing? <laughs> well, I think that you never expect that you are prepared for winning a world championship, even when you have worked pretty, pretty hard to, to achieve it. Uh, all the sailors have a very high quality and they sell pretty good, so there is always a big uh, fight between so many boats to win a championship. So, yeah, we were uh, looking forward to, go to do a good performance and to get back into the feelings we had before the, the, the New Zealand Championship, the, the World Championship in New Zealand. And that's what we tried to do. We, we didn't thought about the results until the medal race, I think. That, that, I hear people, that's what they try to do, Tamara. Uh, they, you try not to think about the results too much and, until the very end of the regatta, but how easy is it to do that, really? <laughs> it's, it's not easy, because I think that all the sailors, when we are doing this race, because we want to win, it's like, it's like I don't know if like a, our nature, I don't know if we can do it, if it's in English, in Spain, so good. But it's like, you have to manage uh, this kind of expectation because if not, you are dead. It's like, it's a little bit like Paula said, it's uh, okay, we did a really bad uh, world in New Zealand and we have just two months to try to get our confidence about our performance. That is the first step to, to, to try to, to try winning everything. So we did it and sometimes you have to remember every every day, okay, you are here to do our like our best, just to go to the water, doing and then it's all. Because it's not just you start thinking about another thing that you it like don't help you to be better. So it's like Paula is explained so well that it's like okay, every day, every race is like <laughs> a different race. So we have to fight. We have to do our best and this is our best price. So finally, when you just to start confidence in our decisions and then <clears throat> the things is like it's going well, it's like you just have more space for like thinking about results or something like that. But for us, the goal in the world is like it's another. So finally, we took the, the, the goal that is like amazing, <laughs> like Pablo Sail. And for me, it's like, wow, it's, it's something that makes true. It finally, it's like just because Paula and me worked so well and so hard. But it's true that in this class, in effect, there are a lot of things with a lot of experience and there are really good sailors that sail really, really well every uh, race. And finally, you have to find in the medal race with the same points. So uh, I think that it's like it's not easy, but I think that, that all the sailors have these different tools no, to manage this kind of expectation or fears or sometimes like nervous or this kind of thing. So. Well, I'd, I'd like to ask you about pressure and how you cope with pressure under different circumstances. But let's just talk our way around the Windward Mark. So it's Henkin and Tobias, uh, another uh, Olympic gold medalist, just as yourself, Tamara. Uh, Tobias being a, a Anna Tunnicliffe as she was when she won the laser radial gold medal in 2008. Their first round, followed by the Swedish Vesta and Netzler, followed by Lutz and Vimas, and now two Spanish boats, but it's the other Spanish Suarez and Van der Velden who go around just ahead of you. 
really good hoist by ESP21 and already getting down the inside line and going into a jibe. Very, very smooth maneuver and also a jibe by you girls. Just go out of picture there. Why did you go for the jibe set there, Paola? Because we thought there were most pr more pressure on the right side and we like more the, the right side on the upwind. So we decided to, to do a jibe and, and keep going with the, with the cast. Okay, so what was working for you upwind, you want to keep on using as you go downwind. It's, it's quite a difficult maneuver to get right, isn't it, Tamara, in the, in the yeah. water effects? Yeah, <clears throat> for sure in this kind, well, today is not super windy, but it's like with a strong conditions, sometimes you have to think about a lot about this kind of maneuver because it's like, it's, it's risky. <clears throat> but in this case, uh, it's like when you are running the mark and the, the, the wing is changing in this, uh, in this area that is changing so much and there are like different, there were like different pressures no, around the course. Uh, we, we, we knew that we have to jive because the, the the net pressure is the next pressure is in the right, so uh, I think that sometimes you have to decide these kind of things. And maybe the maneuver is not perfect, but finally you you gain if you are going to decide. <clears throat> um, so two Spanish boats doing very well in this race. Uh, do, how much training do you do with Suarez and Van der Velden? Uh, how much training? Training. Oh. How, how, do you practice with them? Yeah, 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 yeah. We were training uh, since we started sailing with all the Spanish teams. At the beginning, we were three, and then in the last wars, two. <clears throat> so we train together all this time. So uh, sometimes with different goals because the teams are different. But yes, most of the time we train together. Okay, and um, in a, a battle with them right now towards the front of the fleet. Um, in terms of uh, you're fourth in this race at the moment. Are you thinking in terms of attack or defend when you're in fourth place, Paola? I think uh, on defend. Uh, it was a good result for us and it was pretty complicated the day, so it was very easy to go back. And, and I think a fourth, it was such a very good result. And, and also I remember that Saskia and Charlotte were a bit back, so I think we were pretty happy with with that result. Okay, um, and so the, the British team, you already had them in your sights as your main rivals for the world title at that, that stage, did you, Tamara? Uh, yeah, finally, like, <clears throat> I think that both teams did a really good um, performance in the world. So finally, just to <clears throat> start the medal, medal race with uh, the same point, is like, okay, these two teams uh, deserve to, to win the, the goal. So finally, yes a little thing that make the difference, but, but the level is quite similar. So it's true that the last, the last day is just thinking about, okay, there is like a team that is close to us, or that is a little bit far away. So for Paula and me, we were training all the time, all kind of or different kind of things during the race. So we have to <clears throat> do the job that the same thing that we've been doing all the World Championships. So it's like doing the things that we, think that is like correct so it's like okay the the, the british uh, teams are so close we just to play with them but we have to keep working um a fairly good rounding but a little bit late on the kite drop it looked like by henken and tobias but it doesn't matter because they've got such a big lead right now um paolo why is it that when people get in the lead they they can sometimes stretch away like this Excuse me, can you repeat the, sure. the end of the... So why, why do we see the leaders um, build their lead so much in, in races like this? <laughs> why? Because um, it was pretty... I don't know if I have uh, understand the question, maybe, Tamara. You give me your yeah. best answer anyway. Like, uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes it's easier for the, 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 the top three of the boat just sailing with, uh, <clears throat> with, um, uh, with the wing, with uh, no shadows and this kind of thing. So yeah. most of the time, the top five of the, of the fleet, and for sure in this kind of condition that, uh, uh, that you have different kind of gas, that sometimes you just take it and just to go. Uh, far away from the others, so I think that the top three or four in the in this split is like can 
sail comfortable than the, the, the other boat that is like fighting in a really big group of, of boats. So for that, I think that one is the reason and the other is because they, this guy, this guy sails so well and took all the... <laughs> so finally, we see a picture of you in, in the shot. So uh, you're, you're sailing along towards the left-hand side of the track, following the Americans in the lead. Uh, Paola, what do you what do you see when you see this? Um, what can you be doing better than you're already doing in this picture? Um, probably sailing a bit flatter. Okay. You always have things to improve, and probably giving more information to Tamara about the course. <laughs> But that's, but that's, I, I that's Tamara's job. She hasn't got anything else to do, right? I mean, what are you doing? You're just holding a piece of carbon stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <and that. laughs> I have to say that Paula does a really good job on, on, on board because most of the time the crew like has a really tough job because it's like dreaming all the time, but in up with the main and in down with the spinnaker, that is like the big sail that pushes the boat. So it's, for me, it's really uh, impressive that uh, she does all her job and also help me to, to make the tactic decision. So can I say I have the, the, the perfect crew on board? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're getting 150% performance out of Paula. It, it's quite unusual, I think, isn't it, in the 49er or the FX for the, for the crew to have a tactical input upwind? Generally, the crew is quite focused on boat speed. Is, is that right? Yeah, but yeah. for me, like, uh, it's really uh, impressive because all of my crew <coughs> just do these kind of things. But it's like, for me, it's, it's to, to sail in the same page of the book. Because if you are talking with your crew about what is happening around us and what is the next step that we would like to do, it's like we are sailing in the same page of the book. So when if something happens, if I have to do some, something that is not expected, uh, Paula knows everything about the, the, this moment, about the race course, and sometimes she, she can't take decision for me. So for me, it's really nice to have this kind of conversation between both because it's not just for doing our best race, it's because we can learn from one to the other. So it's super nice. It's not easy because we have to work so hard to, to, to do both things. But I think that we feel comfortable doing this kind of things together. Yeah, it's obviously working well for you. Looking at Henkin and Tobias, it makes me think that uh, Anna Tobias, Anna Tunnicliffe, as she was a few years ago, she went to the London 2012 Games probably as the favourite to win gold medal in the women's match racing. And then she doesn't have such a good uh, championship and you end up winning that gold. And if I may say so, Tamara, I didn't have you down as one of the favourites to win the gold medal in London 2012, but you did it. Um, mm -hmm. what, what do you know about Anna as a competitor? Well, Anna is like a really good competitor. It's like a real, but it, it's not just in sailing, in all the sport that she decided to do it. It's amazing. And she's a really good person. I love talking to her. It's like super friendly and kind. And for me, it's one of the best sailors. And also it's like, look like the sport is in the, <laughs> inside her because uh, whatever she decides to do, finally she gets the success. So I think that it's impressive to, to see this, these girls also, how they are improved because he starts super late too. And also Anna is it's like, it's getting used to be a skipper and now he's his crew. So it's, it's amazing. I love Sail Again, say her, because I remember that for London 12, uh, uh, um, 2012, that we we were training together to to the um, to the Olympics and also it's, it's, she she has an amazing performance because I remember that she won not all but almost all the races before the games but you know that the games is like a little bit different so it's like it's, you have to manage a lot of pressure that you are not used <laughs> so finally you have a lot of things to that you have to be uh yeah. to, to have to manage so i think that doesn't matter if uh, she like wins or not because she's a really good sailor paolo 
Uh, what is Tamara like under pressure? Tell me what she's like in those critical moments in a regatta. Making jokes. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I have to say that making jokes and sometimes she she just uh, like shut up, like she doesn't say anything and, and that's how I know that she's nervous. But uh, most of the time she said, Paula, I'm nervous. I will try to do it, uh, my best and it's very honest. I think that's important because you have to know how is the other person you are sailing with and and. Mm, I, I, I don't say it when I'm nervous, <laughs> she just feel it. So I think I, I can improve this, but uh, I think she, she's the same with pressure that with no pressure. Oh, that's sometimes the mark of a great champion. I, I, I wanna come back to that in a moment. Let's just talk through this, uh, this hoist and I want you to give yourselves marks out of 10 for your performance. So um, <laughs> you're coming, into the windward mark approach you go into the bear away paula runs in starts hoisting the jenica tomorrow's making a joke just to uh to keep this <laughs> and she hasn't got anything else to do with I love <laughs> so, so um how marks out of 10 how was that how do you rate that paula <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what was how how do you rate your hoist? What was your performance like just then? Ah, well, I have to say that the hoist was my special point because uh, I did such a very bad hoisting, and and we were pretty high uh, before the the championship. So I think that's a great hoist. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So 10 out of 10. You give yourself 10 out of 10. No room for improvement. <laughs> Not a 10 because you always have things to improve, but maybe an 8. eight. I, I can do it faster. <laughs> uh, um, what about you, Tamara? How about you? What, oh, what well, you I think yourself? that I can improve too because finally, like, better way with the with the boat flat, but I think that the wing is just to touch the water a little bit, so stop the boat. So. Tamara, you cannot do it this. <laughs> true that uh, it, it, it was a really good um, maneuver, not a perfect one, but we have the time to train it. <laughs> now at the if, moment, you saw, if you saw my la latest manu uh, hoisting, you will give me 10, 10 to 10. So. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I take your word for it. So you used to be terrible and now you're perfect. Yeah. That's what you're <laughs> no, not perfect. Yeah. No, but I used to be terrible. Like, <laughs> <laughs> show, show us your lockdown arms. I hope you've been working on those arms in lockdown. Have yeah. you? So, go on, show us. Whoa, check them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just want to say that my coach used to say, your grandma will be faster hoisting than you. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine. <laughs> Tamara, have you considered Sailing with Paula's grandmother? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, should be a, could be a good decision. I'm not sure. No, 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 no. I, no, no, I, no, I hate you, Paula, but now I met <laughs> You're happy sailing with no the Wendy, please. <laughs> Yeah. So, so you've just been, at the moment, you're still in second, but here's the other team, the, Suare, the Spanish team, Suarez and Van der Velden. They're going fast and looks like they've just overtaken you for second place. So what happened there? How did they manage to get past you? Yeah, I remember the situation because I think that uh, <clears throat> uh, Patty and Nicole did a really good job in this downwind because uh, they jive in the perfect side with the gas. So Paula um, and me followed uh, them, but a little bit late. So she couldn't stay a little bit lower than us. And in the next day, I just to cross our bout, but it's true that I talked to Paula that for us it's okay, it's just one point. And all, I remember that most of the fleet is going to the right, so we have to close this this fleet. So say, okay, no worries. Just to, yeah. uh, like, it's just one point. Uh, I think that they cross our bow, and Paula me just to keep going and close the fleet and say, okay, this is a really good result for us. So, so I remember that they did a really good downwind in this race. So it's like, okay, it's one point, but, they did better than us, so we have to close the, the, the other fleet that is coming from the right. 
and just to go to the finish line. Yeah, so third place in, in a race as tricky as a venue as Geelong, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Now, we, we see Henkin and Tobias, they look like maybe they've overstood the way that they're sailing. It looks like they're struggling to make it through the line, but the FX is absolutely lit up there. It looks amazing, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember this ray that is the one, one of the most difficult things is just to sail inside the box, box all the time because it's like the wind is like changing a lot, but the, the, the pressure too. So sometimes it's like you did the perfect lay line, but just at, at the, the gas is coming and you are just too out, so outside the box. So this kind of things for me is what's like so difficult to, to do it. Um, so there not far off winning this race they're just crossing the line there so a win for Henken and Tobias and then two Spanish teams coming down but look at the gap for Henken and Tobias so they had a good gap um, early on in that race and they managed to extend uh, but Suarez and van der Velden ESP 21 they overtook you girls down the last run so the the red kite crosses for second place and here comes ESP 23 one more jibe to go and give yourselves a mark out of 10 for this jibe. How was that, Paula? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give you 10 for that. I think that was really good. There, there was, that was a very, very smooth, fast maneuver there. So uh, good all the way to the end, I would say. Um, I would say that uh, maybe we can finish the maneuver a bit flatter, but... <laughs> Oh, whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? Both. Okay. Uh, Both. Skipper's holding her hand up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, pretty pretty impressive. You know, it, like she's always doing like this. It's like, no, we can do better. We can do better. We can do better. So finally, you have to work for doing this. If not. <laughs> So who is more the perfectionist of you two? Who's always looking for that last thing? Uh, Both. She's saying that I'm always looking forward, but she's also very, very strict, uh, like pushing hard. And I think that both. <laughs> both. It has to be both of you, doesn't it, really? Yeah. End? Um, yeah. Now, just crossing the line there, we've got uh, the Dutch number one on their sail. They were the reigning world champions coming into this competition. And then on the far end of the finish line, we've got Brazil two. And um, so they're the reigning Olympic champions, uh, Martina Grell and Kayana Kunz from Brazil. Now, they didn't have a great regatta, and as I remember, I don't think that the Kiwi girls, the Olympic silver medalists from Rio, had a particularly good regatta here. So we, we had a, a slightly strange uh, finishing order in Geelong. What do you think the reasons were for that? <coughs> well, I'm not sure, because I think that each team has different goals, but it's like... Uh, sometimes different, because, for example, for us, this world is was like super important because we are in the middle of the trial for World to the Olympic and for, all, for other teams it's just uh, another race. So it depends on the things that you want to work. Maybe they <clears throat> they were working something that they needed and finally they couldn't do their best result. But I think that sometimes you need to to realize that there, is, that, that, there is, that there are some things that is around on the team that they working and it's not always the result. So <clears throat> for me, these two teams that you were talking about is like one, both of them are the most of the fleet because uh, they uh, did a really good results around all this campaign. <clears throat> so I think that sometimes you have your best champions or not, but it depends on the goals that you want to get it in, in each race. And for sure they've been working on other things and it's not, doesn't matter. For me, the best thing in FX is like, uh, uh, there are a lot of teams that can win, um, can take in the medals in the different racing, and you are have to fight in a, against the best all the time. And for me, it's the best of the of the split that all the time the podium is changing. There are some teams that are more time than the others, but it's like all the team is doing a really good job in the water, have the chance to to take this uh, <laughs> these medals in whatever race. So. 
yeah. yeah sometimes it is just a step backward to go forward stronger so it's very difficult to always be on the top and i think they just have uh, a bad championship but they will be back for sure um I'm sure they will be. And obviously things change a, a lot now. Now that we don't have the games in July 2020, but we have them in July 2021. I suppose the problem for the Brazilians is that as we speak today uh, at the, uh, the end of May, the beginning of June in 2020, the uh, COVID-19 situation in Brazil does not look good. And as I understand it, um, from speaking to uh, Iago Mara a couple of weeks ago, um, Martina and Kaena hadn't been on the water up until that point. And although they would be allowed to, they felt out of respect to the other people that are suffering so much in Brazil that it wouldn't be the right thing to go on the water. So we have this situation where some people, maybe the, the Swedish, for example, have been able to sail a lot longer than other people. Looks like you in Spain have the chance to to get sailing together again fairly soon. Um, but this is creating an imbalance in the Olympic world where some people have the opportunity to go sailing sooner than others. How much do you think that is going to affect build up towards Tokyo 2021? Well, I'm not sure, <laughs> but, I, but I, I think that for the moment we have a lot of time in front of us. So it's like more than 13 months or something like that. So it depends of the tools that you have it. So it's true that the time is really important in this kind of things because more time in the water is better. But looks, Paul and me, less than one year together and you are doing a really good job, you can do it. So is it unfair? I think so. But I think that all the situation is unfair. It's really tough for all the country just to see what happened. In Spain, it was horrible. It's like, uh, it's for sure, because you cannot doing anything for her just to stay at home and sometimes it's like okay we need to do this for help the people and then start thinking about my olympic campaign something like that so i think that now in brazil <clears throat> it's like it was tough just to see from outside i cannot imagine to be there so i think for the moment there are, it's like there are a lot of months in front of us so i have to be calm we have to just to plan what 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 can do or what we want to do but just to keep calm and, and just to think about there are a lot of time in front of us we have to do a really nice job and and i hope that in 20, 2021 all the teams can be prepared for for fighting for the medal because for us it's the, the best thing that is fighting uh, with the best teams in the world and trying to take this medal so hopefully all the boats that are going to be in the olympic can have this time for preparing and to, to, to be there for fighting in the best conditions. Let's hope so. Yeah. Now, uh, Paolo, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I want to say that I think uh, that we are happy that we don't have any uh, competition in a short term. So most of the time it's not about uh, the time, it's more about the quality of the trainings. So I think they will be... Um, they they will be able to to do a good training and and they will be back uh, i'm sure you're right and i i hope that you're right um now earlier tomorrow i asked paula what makes you good under pressure she mentioned the the jokes um <laughs> what do you think makes you good under pressure <clears throat> Well, it's true that when I sail in match racing, I have to do it for a long time because finally it's boat against boat. So you have to sail all the time with a boat so close to you. And this kind of feeling finally is like get normal, like I'm used to. I'm used to, to manage this kind of situation. For me, sometimes it's easier. For me, the, the, the worst thing is like when I get some kind of nervous, it's like I always say, okay, Paula, Stick because if you feel something sticks, maybe you have to say, okay, Tamara, focus on. But just to sail against another boat or, or thinking about what can I do with the boat and the fleet, for me, it's easier. But I think that is because I'm learning much racing and finally I've been doing it for three years. So it's like, it's something natural no? to, to, to take all, this, all the boat and I can just put mine to try to control this one on the strong position or this kind of things. And then I remember that when we were sailing in Aarhus, uh, 
Paul and me just say 10 days together. So the first day that it was like a little bit windy, no, Paula, maybe 16 yeah. knots, in, not, not more than this, but for us it's like, <laughs> not for me, but for, for, for Paula, yes. So we are just to bear away in the, in the Adwin, and I just to feel that Paula is a little bit nervous. So I say, okay, Paula, it's matter, it's the same better way that the knots, but so I just started to just making a joke. So, so I don't know if Pedro Jesus just took a picture and yeah. it's like, my face just smiling and, the, and Pablo is like, yes, I cannot imagine that this, this guy is like, you tell me a joke when I have to bear away that I have to think about what can I do with the hands and then going down and then hold the spinnaker. And for me, it was the, the amazing thing. Okay, Pablo, relax. And it's like, just to look at me and say, Tamara. We are in the world, so you have to make jokes in the better, in the in the top yeah. okay. Just wait for relaxing, no worries. <laughs> it's not the problem. But sometimes it's nice just to change a little bit the mind and feel like more flow in the body. Just you just make a joke, and if you are smiling, it's better, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, matter yeah. in the 20, 20, 22 knots, eh, Paula. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Well, on that last day of the uh, London 2012 Olympics, it was a windy day then. Um, how much were you joking and, and laughing at <laughs> the start of those races for the gold medal? And it was nice because it's like uh, in London, we were the lighter <clears throat> uh, crew. So we have to eat a lot every day. But that's matter. It's like each day, uh, the, the, the crew, the team, is like um, losing weight. So the other team is the bigger one. So the first thing that I told my girls is, come on. This like, we are playing like with the strong condition and the big wave being the lighter one. It's not fair, but just smiling. <laughs> like, and the second thing is just to realize that it's this condition. And the second thing is, okay, girls, we have to do a lot of maneuvers because this boat is, is faster than us. So we have to stop it. And we did it. It's just to take the condition and then doing the different kind of thing that you can do it for winning. But it's true that the first thing that I did is like a joke. Oh, come on. <laughs> we, <five> not? <sighs> we prefer like five because we are stronger <laughs> with these conditions. But it's like, you cannot do it. You, you, you need to sailing and it depends on the wind. So, but the first thing that I did. And the other thing that I remember that it was super nice is from our coach that say, it was a longer final because finally we have to lift to two at five. So to the best of five, and finally we are like one, one, two, two. So it's like, and finally it's like the last one is the who wins, like take the medal. So it's guys, I remember Tony say, okay, girls, you are training in Santander against your mate and your partner, whatever. It's the same. So look at this, it's like you are in the middle of the final in the Olympic Games and it's like, no worries, girl. you are doing the same and you are doing in Santander, just go for it. And finally we did it. So I think that it depends on the person, but for me the smiling and feel like I'm enjoying all the time in the same situation. And it's like, it's mistake for me, it's nice to be still learning from them. So it's this kind of feeling that I think that Paula and me, <clears throat> doing every day to, to, to get improving so quickly. So for me, London is just this. Imagine your coach say, ah, no worries, girls, you are training in Santander and you are in the middle of the game, Facebook, just to say, oh, maybe I take the goal. That is like my dream. <laughs> so and It's one thing for the coach to say that. It's another thing to take that on and, and ignore all the crowd cheering on the shore and and all the boats that are around you. I mean, there is nothing like being at Olympic Games, is there? So how can you pretend yeah. that you're in Santander? I don't know how you do that. <laughs> how? Ah, pretty, oh. ah, yeah. Well, it's like, I, for me, it's, it's complicated, but you, you have to do it. It's just, I remember that, for example, in Rio too, that is like, wow, well, in another Olympic Games with another team, and finally it's doing the same, okay, with this. Win, I have this chance with this, this one. If I say this, so if you are playing like this. But finally, the only thing that I remember is just to go into the water and feel that the Berta is the best crew and we are the best crew and we are just to sailing in another race. And you have just to, 
forget all the things, but it's not just because you have cheering when you are sailing, it's not when you are going out, you have to go to the media. When you come back, you have to go to the media. And I don't know in the other country, but in Spain, the sail is like it's a minor sport, but in the Olympic, it's the king of the, the, the country. So you have a lot of press that have to talk to you just once in, 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 in like it for years. So it's all these kind of things is like a really difficult to manage for the, for the athlete. And I think that the coach has to do this. Okay, we are not in Santander, it's impossible because Weymouth is a little bit colder than Santander. <laughs> <laughs> not so much, they're not so different. <laughs> but it's true that you know that you are not in Santander, but if you coach that you have been working with you a lot of time, say Tamara, Angela, in this case, and Sofia, you like now you are sailing in Santander, you are sailing in Santander. And it's like <laughs> your body feels comfortable because you have been training in Santander for a long time. It's like right. your home water. So if my home water, I feel comfortable. And this is my coach that is the chief. <laughs> I mean, to say yes. Then. I think that it's different kind of tool that you have to, to use it because finally it's, this is like a different race. It's, it's unique. Right, right. Paola, um, you haven't been in the 49er FX that long. Um, you're sailing with an Olympic gold medalist and someone who won the world championship in 2016 with someone different, Berta Vitanzos. Um, when you've got an idea and a suggestion for how to make the boat go faster, how do you as someone that's only, you've only been sailing the boat for two years, how can you tell Tamara what to do? <laughs> um, well, it's... Uh, pretty complicated because she's uh, she has a lot of experience so at first um, I was a bit shy about talking in the boat because uh, you don't have any kind of con confidence of yourself but um, I think that with our coach we work on it because it was pretty important so yeah you you get confidence and also Tamara helped me to get confident that it is very important. So at the end, I think it's between both of us and we have to work together to, to achieve our, our goals. So I realized that if I didn't talk and, I, and if I didn't help to Tamara to, to keep the ball faster and talk about tactics and strategy, um, we couldn't achieve the top. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, you're obviously doing a fantastic job and, and you have a relationship of equals. It seems like you, you do speak to each other as equals, which is the only way you're going to succeed at the very top level, I suppose. Um, when you look back to what you know now, to what you knew in early 2018, how have you changed as a sailor in the last two years? Uh, wow, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, when like I start, I, sorry, go on. No, when I was when I start, I mean, I, I think I was twenty one or twenty two because not, yeah, now I'm twenty four, so I didn't have any kind of experience and I wasn't professional at all. So I was like happy girl <laughs> doing a Olympic campaign and well, I, I don't know how to work, how to communicate. Uh, how how to do everything? Uh, I I have changed. So you've grown up a lot in two years. Then I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. I think that as a sailor and also as a person. So that's the important thing. Yeah. Well, you have achieved so much, you two, in the the last year and a half that you've been sailing together. So I, I'm thinking. We, we mentioned earlier about the challenge of COVID nineteen, but it has given you an extra year. Is that going to help you or would you have rather have gone into these games as the reigning world champions and have competed in two months' time? Uh, both, I think so. Uh, uh, we planned so well the last three, four months that we had for the, uh, the last Olympic in 2020. 
So we yes, we are so comfortable not about the, the, the work that we did, if not the, the work that we have to do it. So we have like a really good partner and also uh, we are surrounded of the best by the best team. So there are a lot of people working with us. Sometimes it's just Paula and me, but it's not true and you know it. There are a lot of people working with us and to help and to teach us a lot of things. So uh, we are comfortable with this uh, job. But finally, you have to change and say, okay, this is not possible. No, I have to now to, to change everything. You are in pre-season. <laughs> but at just five days ago, you are in the, in the part, in the final part of the, <laughs> of the Olympic campaign. And you have now a, one, another year for training. And for us, it's like, it's good because I enjoy sailing with Paula. Finally, we've been sailing less than two years. Why not another year? Just to have fun and try to be better. That for us is the, the important thing. And, and I think that now we can take all these things that you, at the beginning, you don't have time for working. And now you have time. So our goal now is try to uh, work so hard in this week. It's point that at the beginning, you couldn't do it because you didn't have enough time. So now we have it. But finally, I think that it depends on the work and that, that you, you do it for the Olympics. So is, is the, the situation is this one. We cannot change it for that. We have to take it and, and doing our best job with this. So uh, for me, both of them. At the beginning, I thought, Paula, okay, this is my really good challenge. In two years, try to, to get the level for fighting for a medal. That is like the first one was in London. Then uh, we, uh, we did a really good Olympics with Verda, but finally we were fourth. And now, uh, well, we spent two years in Volvo Ocean Race, and now we just have two years. So uh, it's like a good, really good challenge. <laughs> but now we have another year. So <laughs> for, I think that for me and Paula, it's, it's, it's nice, just because I'm enjoying a lot sailing with her. And I think that it's super nice just to find some, uh, some crew. And at the beginning, it's like it's hard because I love uh, yes. Bertha and, and we are close friends. And I thought that it's like a little bit difficult to find this kind of relationship again. And finally, Paula just took me in my life and, it, it, and enjoy a lot with, with her. So it's like, it's, well, it's, for me, it's both of them. It's good, good. Paula, when will be the next time that you expect to sail together with Tamara and where? Well, uh, luckily on Monday we will be back sailing together and in Santander, but well, we will see, but I think that we could sail on Monday. Amazing. And, and what yeah. will it be like? I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have to say that I've been sailing in Musto here in in Arenal so yes. I've got the feelings back and everything but I don't know I, in the Musto I'm calling the rudder I'm taking the rudder and normally Tamara takes the takes the rudder so I don't know it will be nice to to have a, another person I think uh, you're going to be telling her to how you. to steer the boat aren't you <laughs> you're going to be telling Tamara how to steer the boat you've been steering your own musto skiff for the last few weeks no 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 I think I will have enough work on my section like with the main sheet the balance and everything like I won't be focused on on Tamara's brother and <laughs> your job's going to be so easy after the musto skiff isn't it <laughs> yeah that's true yeah. Yeah. You you can imagine a jive with with the spinnaker, the main sheet, the rudder, the balance, the trapeze. It's it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. Be possible. So a lot uh, of capsizing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, I think life will feel quite easy for you afterwards. Um, yeah. So that's exciting. You're only a few days away from going sailing again together. Uh, Tamara, what's, how have you become a better sailor over the past couple of months during the lockdown? Uh, well, we did a lot of things. Uh, so uh, most of the time, uh, we don't have time for doing a lot of things because you are in the water and training or in the gym or doing uh, something with them, <coughs> mains or mass. Finally, the, the, 
there is a lot of information in the internet that you can take it. You can just watch a lot of tracks for the best one sailing, just not in 49er on FX in, in another class. So uh, we've been training a lot of things uh, from ourselves uh, <clears throat> to the water that is like being better in tactics, strategies, also doing some kind of uh, rules class to, to some ones to learn and others uh, just to refresh. <laughs> and what else? And also, we we start to talking about the meteorology, talking about the clouds. And I think that if you still working to be better sailor, doesn't matter what, you are gonna be better sailor. So for me, it's really important. Uh, uh, for us, like uh, took this time outside the the the, the water and doing uh, this kind of thing. That finally you didn't have enough time for doing everything when you are in the water. So yeah, we've been training so hard all these weeks, not stop. So uh, just to, to to use this time for something worth. So, so you're not been wasting this time at all. Well, thank you for wasting your time with me. I've really enjoyed speaking to both of you, um, and I know that you're excited about sailing together again. I look forward to seeing you somewhere on the circuit. I can't wait to see you again in person. Thanks for talking us oh, through that race. Congratulations, what you achieved in Geelong. And I know that we have a lot more to see from you in the, the coming years. So I wish you both the very best. <laughs> Thank you to my Thank Shandy. you to you. Paola, okay. you have to say something about the... No, <laughs> about the car. <laughs> no I was saying... <laughs> I was saying that Andy's hair is longer every time. Cut, edit, <laughs> edit. <laughs> Nothing, nice wrong with you and... Nothing wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> Hope to see you again soon. Definitely time to finish this interview. All right. <laughs> Adios. See you.